Hello. <clears throat> What's happening, everybody? Alright, um, last week I started building a tennis sneaker. Um, I think I'll just put the finishing touches on that, and then I want to do some environment stuff today. So, I believe I usually don't save them as projects, but for some reason this character felt like having a ZBrush project with all the Z tools in it that I wanted. So, usually I just save out the Z tool. Um, so, the main things I did off camera are I, uh, if you remember, just towards the end of the stream, I was building these shoelaces with Z spheres. Um, so, that's what where those ended up. I was going to just wrap them into the like the sort of upper sort of heel there, um, but I found that I had an insert mesh brush of this nifty little bow. So since I had that, I was like, oh well, I'll just make it, you know, the bunny ears knot. And uh, see what else did I do? That's about it. I um, put the rivets in there to help me guide the brushes through, and then I adjusted the overall shape a little bit, and that um, caused me to sort of need to adjust. I need to fix that one, and uh, yeah, just sort of place these all again. And then, of course, I uh, I put the the body into the mesh or into the um, sub-tool list. And as if you remember, I'm doing this, this Z tool is aligned to the world axis, so I could you know, see how it's shaping up um, in all the world axes. Um, but the character isn't. So like, the uh, I like rotated the character, you can see she's at skew um, for the purposes of just placing the foot in there and being able to see that my proportions are sound because I know this human body is all the right size, and um, you know the the actual foot would be kind of tilted up a little bit more there, but I think it's fine. Um, just to make sure everything's you know, got a nice grounding in reality because you'll be surprised how often um, you'll be surprised how often you get nipped in the butt by. Uh, Something looks correct in 3D view. You check it in all directions. You know, sculpt around the model, and you find out. Oh, this looks. You don't see any artifacts. And then all of a sudden, you go and place it on a character. You tilt it a certain way, and you find out that oh wow, this is actually super disproportionate or not symmetrical or yeah yeah. But you know, maintaining that symmetry and balance is really tough. What's up, Pixelogic Kyle? What's going on? Um, maintaining that like balance is. Uh, you know, really important in this stage, and it's something you kind of kind of fight for because you know, as soon as you stop paying attention, you start laying down some brush strokes, and all of a sudden, like you know, you're just a little bit fatter on a side you don't want to be fatter on, things like that. So just keeping it symmetrical for now helps. And then when I switch back over to the character, um, I'll use that leg to help position where it is on her. So like, this is where I got the leg from, of course. I placed it on my symmetric or my world space align model. And then I'll grab this leg. I'll use Transpose Master. I'll grab all these sub tools. I'll grab that leg. And then I'll just basically transpose the leg until it lines up. You know, you know it's, it's a bit tedious, but it's, it's really kind of pretty fast considering what you're doing. Like um, just building the model and fitting it almost pixel perfect to the vertices of the existing match. I'll just transpose it right into place. Then I'll know the shoes will work. You know, as you can even probably see here, the shoes are a little bit big in this view, so that's what kind of prompted me. Like you can see, I took a little decimated one here. Um, just a decimated placeholder. So I get only 5,000 tries for the both of them, or 5,000 points. And just, you know, saw where I was having clipping, where the heel was too wide, you know, found all the places it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna be snug on her foot. Brought the leg back over, and then fit everything a little bit tighter to her because I mean she's a pretty um, there's not a ton of variety to her character like the dress I'm gonna do will have like pleats and this will be a little bit more 
a little bit more uh, detailed cloth than our other characters because she doesn't have a lot of you know detail in her in her concept. Um, so I really want to make the shoes kind of you know a little bit less. Uh, our other character shoes are a little bit more generic because they're not they're not very big on screen. They don't get a lot of uh, real estate, and it's not very focal point of the character. But for her, I kind of wanted just to have it um, have a little bit more detail than my other characters. So, not much more to do here. Um, I think I'm going to tweak the sort of plastic ribbing here. Oops. I'm going to tweak that a little bit to fix up the back. I don't like how that all kind of just meets kind of flatly and it's kind of boring there. What's up, Gary Game? How you doing? Um, and also probably um, I want to build like a trim around here that goes to like the second hole on that one, the first hole on that one, then I'll place the rivet, adjust the laces a little bit, and I'm pretty much done. Um, you know, I know that I'm going to have little uh, divots in the mesh here. Where's my drag dot? Like I know I'm probably gonna do something along these lines. Even that's probably too big. But the thing is, because this is gonna be going onto a game mesh, um, I want to be careful about doing this in the geometry versus doing this in texture, because I'm not sure how much texture resolution I'm gonna have. So even if I spend the time sculpting the details in ZBrush, it might not actually come through. The texture it might not be enough resolution for it so um, basically the, the the main thing I want to get out of the zebra sculpt since I'm you know gonna be baking this in a game engine is I want to get it so you know like the high-res detail is represented like you know getting rid of all of those little facets in the face and getting like a nice smooth leathery shape that you know just has like these kind of just surface details that are kind of sculpted by hand and then when it comes to like the the super high frequency details that I may or may not have texture resolution from for, um, I'll likely do those in, in the texture package just because it'll let me control what I can get away with. It'll be a little bit clearer. Mortar Caner, how you doing? What's up? What's going on, Blance? I was just uh, going through where I left off last week and um, where we're at now, and yeah, basically the shoe's pretty much done. Um, like I said, I just want to do a few bits of cleanup, and I lost, I've been re a few times, so I lost all my texture information, so I'll probably go through and color that up again, probably paint information that is. Most of this will get adjusted um, after I've extracted the geo, so it's not incredibly important that I'm super precise here. Any artifacts will be easier to clean up when this is actually a geo. But while I'm here, might as well make it as easy on myself as I can. See, so yeah, this one will only sort of wrap to this one rivet.
So yeah, it's just be a little trim I'll extract, and it'll be sort of where the rubbery cloth of the shoe meets some kind of like cuff. say this I know that um, with every major release that ZBrush has done Pixelogic has done there are big changes so I'm not expecting anything different from the announcement whatever the announcement is going to be at the ZBrush streaming event if you guys haven't heard about it they're doing a big uh, Pixelogic's doing a big event next week where they'll probably share some info with you guys Nicely, um, works really well. Um, Z remesher that is when you have like you know, a nice forgiving rounded edges like this, which has a sort of rubbery trim. This would have. A sphere when he uses an eye can someone mirror it so it's on the opposite side. Second suit from another sphere. Yeah, the thing you're looking for. In fact, I'll do it on this character. Because I believe I've already done this issue on this one. So yeah, got these eyes, right? If I only had one, and I would say I only had one mesh. The thing to do is, you know, place it in there, get it right where you want it, so it's just so, and then uh, make sure local symmetry is off and just do mirror by weld mirror and weld x axis it'll go across x and then 
boop, and it'll drop it right in there. And then if you have it on your right side, and you need to mirror and weld, it'll erase everything. It's going to try and mirror nothing to the right, because it's always in the same direction, the positive direction in each axis. So all you got to do there is just do a little mirror, and then mirror and weld. And these can be found in Subtool Deformation, I think. No, sorry, Geometry. I put them on my UI so I don't have to dig for them. Modify Topology? That'll do it for you. Yeah, there you go. There's the streaming event. Kyle just linked it. Alright, I did not mean to make all that visible. Socks, shoes, oh, that's the shoes block out. Delete those now that I got my real shoes. Shadow box and delete that. Let's keep the visor, let's keep the dress. Floor is just for, so I have something that's uh, visible in game. That's like the, where the floor is going to be. Just grounds the mesh and make sure I'm uh, placing her in the place that the rig will have to be. So that's why I put the floor there. It's actually a little bit off. That's what, like, The reason I put the floor there is because I made her a little bit too high. So just a reminder that if I get a chance, transpose master, probably I'll drop that down to the ground level. Cool, yeah, that's the way to do it, Gary. Well, I mean, mortar caner, I mean, it's like, you know, first of all, like the alt click is how you do jumping from subtool to subtool, and that's something super, super, you know, I uh, couldn't live without that. But I mean, you know, if you got it on your mirror and weld right there, like I use mirror and mirror and weld a lot, and, you know, because I'm doing game resolution stuff, I'm usually working in symmetry and building up all the base stuff um, that, you know, most of my props are going to be symmetrical, and I'll break up the symmetry later in texturing. Um, so yeah, I mean it's like I catch myself a lot just working on one half of the mesh and symmetry is not active. So I, I hit that mirror and weld often. I'm I'm usually um, you know a lot of times I'll just be working on one side and right before I export I'll mirror and weld. So definitely you know one click away is about as fast as it gets to be honest. You don't have to dig into the menus to bonus. Probably group all. polish on there. We'll round things out, but like I said, round is good for specifically what this G is supposed to be for. I want to make sure I just have the place. While it's, while it's a single, you know, there's only, well it's just face geometry, there's no thickness to this. This is the time I really want to get my placement correct, um, because it'll be harder to make these adjustments when the thing has thickness. Just want to be just snug with the trim of the leather, and then it can kind of look like it has like it's been sewn in. Kyle, you guys doing anything else for E3? I mean, I know you guys are probably busy as heck with the um, with the event and everything. But you guys have any other plans? You guys doing any? You guys doing any parties? You doing any ZBrush hangouts? I know you guys are based out here.
will be our first E3 in a couple years where we're not presenting, so that's exciting. <laughs> Probably should be doing a little bit more marketing of the game at E3 while we're there, but... Excited to be just attending and not having to worry about presenting. It's really stressful. What's going on, Ashley? A cubed is Ashley Adams. She's a super talented sculptor. She streams on Wednesdays. She's doing a really cool creature last night. Ashley can like freestyle her sculpts, and I'm very jealous of that ability. I don't have a, you'll see when I switch over to environment, if I don't have this reference like right in front of my face, I start to try, I have like no idea what I'm building. This is what we're going to be doing next. Um, just building some props for the world. Oh, that sounds, that's cool, Kyle. Yeah, I don't know, E3 is more like a consumer event. You know, I just, uh, it's all crowded, there's lines, I don't, I'm not really like, I, I never really kind of, the allure of it as a fan of gaming, which I am, of course, is, is kind of lost on me. Let's go, Inspector Dave. How you doing? I'm trying to mirror and weld it, but I get the resulting 3D match that I can't tell you I've already canceled. Uh, yeah, so if you remember when I was um, showing you the eye, keep in mind that it always mirrors in the positive direction of the axis. So, positive X is right in ZBrush. So, a mirror will switch it to the right, mirror and weld will mirror to the right. But if you're in the right part of the eye socket, and you hit mirror and weld, it's going to give you that same error you just saw. Resulting mesh is not going to, because that would trying to mirror nothing to the right side of the axis. So that's why I mentioned uh, hit the mirror, which is just to uh, flip the object to the other side, and then mirror and weld from left to right. That should, that should do you. So let me know if that works for you, Gary. I'll undo all that. So I think there's actually texture info on these eyes. I don't want to mess with them. All right, back to shoe town. I'll probably, I don't think I want that hard crease there. Although, some of the reference I was looking at, they kind of have, like, it's like one of those, it's like a thick, thick, thick cloth that would like, that, that, that cuts off right there, and there's like kind of like, you kind of see into the fibers in, inside of it. So maybe I will leave it like that for now, actually. Just subdivide it kind of. Part of me wants to leave it creased and keep it nice and tight like that. I don't know. Might fight against the, uh, the hard plastic here, but later for now. It's not critical I make the decision just yet. Alright, let's adjust these rivets here. What's up, Azuther? Got fast questions, need to go then. Hit me with the question, see if I can help you out. Oh, that's awesome, Xanity plays. Well, uh,. You know, I tell you, what I wouldn't give to have gone through school 
during the sort of art stream craze that's happened over the last like 10 years like the amount of people sharing their methods now compared to you know where you could sort of find and learn from um, just people you know posting their method and showing their workflows uh, it's night and day now it's just you can find so many good workflows out there so many people sharing how they do things um, man I really wish that that was a thing when I was learning so get this rivet out here to match I mean, Ashley's a good example. Ashley is uh, so good and has not been doing this all that long. It's like really encouraging. Um, yeah, relatively speaking, I mean, she's got years of experience, of course, and she absolutely knows what she's doing. It's that um, you know she's got a job in the industry and has really only been doing 3D for a, a portion of her career as an artist, like a recent portion. So I mean, it's really encouraging as far as like for you students and stuff who are looking to get into the business and these are worthy of just placeholders at the end of the day like what I'll end up doing is likely closing them out turning them to booleans and cutting holes in all these meshes so it's like a proper ring like I'll duplicate this off keep that ring there and then create another one that I then shrink down and I'll drill holes into the shoe with a boolean it's um, probably gonna be the fastest way to do that It's not incredibly important that these line up. Just like what I was saying earlier with the trim, it's just like, yeah, if I can do a little bit of noodling now, it'll save me time later when I go into the final details of it. It's called Dog and Pony Show. It's pretty funny. What's up, Snuggle Hugs? Watching these courses is excellent. Yeah, so anybody who was here at the tail end of last week, I was just, um, that's basically how I did those. Uh, just the Z, Z spheres. Um, if you watch my stream from last week, I'll show you how I set that up. But yeah, you know, whenever, I, I forget, I think Pavlovich might have been, one of the other instructors, Mike Pavlovich, might have been the first person to uh, show that method. And then, yeah, once I saw that once, I was like, oh, man, because doing laces is always a pain in the butt. Um, you know, when you're stringing, when you're trying to wrap something around a, a, a shape that's, you know, unique like a shoe or some other kind of, whenever you're, th whenever you're threading something really. Um, I saw the Z-Sphere solution and it's just, it is the fastest thing I found. And then a quick export and, you know, that's only 2,000 um, points. And I'll probably run, I'll probably delete an edge loop or two out of this, take it down to maybe a thousand. And, you know, for, for a, a next gen character in an, uh, Xbox One or PlayStation 4 or modern day PC game, a current gen character, I suppose you call it. Uh, that's that's more than enough, and I'll, I'll keep I'll keep that geometry off the shoe, so it'll like you know when you zoom out, really it just would kind of blend into the texture. But like up close, you'll kind of see um, I'm gonna keep like the kind of hard form geometry, and it'll, uh, it'll be pretty solid, I think. I did that with the uh, the other male character. I kept the shoelace geo, which typically I would just bake it down and and because it is it's such a small piece of geo why give it polygons 
but uh, I notice that it really pops off the mesh and like the the bow even on the other character. Um, you kind of catch it in the silhouette a lot. It makes the shoe have a little bit more realism. So I surprised how much it worked. To be honest. The only thing I gotta remember is that I got socks in the. She's got some socks that are kind of thicken out um, the leg a little bit, so I'll probably need to pull this back. Bring that in. here because it brings the geo um, closer in a kind of a more flat way. There's less fall off. Okay. That should be fine. Yeah. Fitting nice, looking nice. At this point, I think if the sock kind of clips into this little thing, it will be very hard to notice. When you texture, did you use multi-tile UV D and I got my model out when you textured. I got my model out from ZBrush. I also created Retopo for that in Topo Gun 2. Created multi-tile UVs and Unfold 3D. I'm now wondering what application you use to bake those maps out in order to take mesh of those UVs. Neural maps to Mari. Um, multi-tile UDIMS is actually supported by Substance Painter, and that's what I—that's what I've been using for uh, my texture flow. It's something I've only been using for about a year now because it's a pretty new piece of software, but it's just so fast. Um, Marmoset too supports UDIMS, and uh, you know it's outside the scope of this channel, of course, to for to walk you through all that. But um, if you if you Google like UDIM texture bake Substance Painter, UDIM texture bake Marmoset. Each has like a workflow for UDIMs, and you could, um, you'll be able to go, and you can do trials of each of that piece of software for like 30 days or something. And then, um, if you want to give it a spin there, just for the purposes of your your current model, um, you'd be able to big out your textures. Now you got the now you got the low poly detail, and you've got the high poly, and you got your your UV UV cage and all that. You know, you're ready to start generating your low resolution mesh and trying to get you know your detailed projected mesh um, rendered in your textures that's the, that's the fun part when you're looking at 30,000 polygons but it's drawn as if it's got you know 20 million that's the that's the trick that's the fun bit
what uh what um core how would you lay this down mortar cleaner yeah there are like a lot of tutorials Zandy plays yeah it's a good point like there are a lot of tutorials out there where it's like you know and it's not even that they're bad like a lot of tutorials like go through the info and they have good info but they take a long time to get there and then you kind of find yourself watching like a 20 minute video on some method and it's like you know again I always pump his channel but it's only because it's been you know so helpful for me and that's the Mike Pavlovich one of the other instructors here like his he just has like the perfect pace where it's like he just talks through everything he's doing so even if it's something you've not seen a workflow before he just kind of tells you what he's doing even if he's on his way to doing something else he'll like talk you through how he's doing and why he's doing what he's doing and it's just so helpful Oh my god, that's so funny, so. Like Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes audio stream. how much I'm enjoying this. this music. And I'll probably throw some like, you know, and again this this back this back tongue here it's not really a tongue, but this little strap you kind of sometimes see in the back of shoes that kind of like wrap through and go into the heel. Um, this is another part, like I'll probably have a logo and some like, you know, high frequency detail, like a cloth pattern. And I could go into ZBrush and I could go into um, the surface noise and do a cloth pattern on here. But again, like if I, I want to do that in texture package. All I wanted to get out of this is just like nice, smooth edging and like a good piece of geo that, that projects well because if I do anything and you know, my, my time could be wasted if I if I start worrying about the high frequency detail and making this like you know half a million polys and, and doing the cloth texture in ZBrush um, I might not even have the texture resolution when it comes to UV time so as I mentioned before like I'll leave that detail out of this because this is going to be a game a game mesh and I'm pretty close with it I think the last thing I want to do so I'll start bumping out this leathery stuff so it's a little bit more leathery and what's going on Dark and Grim, how you doing? Yeah, I'm just work on this a little bit. I'm just gonna go through the standard brush and sort of like give some dimples and fold and like just suggest some of the tension that might be created get out of here same song it's fine just start trying to reinforce the hardness of this part of the plastic of this material that I'm working on right now the hardness I want to reinforce that this is a hard surface a hard polish here clean up that edge the shoe. Hard surface and alt, by the way, is another amazing thing I couldn't live without. Like you hold the H polish with the alt button, it actually builds the surface out to your brush. But like hold it out, see like it like 
if I'm like polishing something down, I could also like, you know, hold Alt and like polish it up, you know. So it's another really useful way to use that brush. Hmm. Team Biscuit sounds lovely right about now. This won't this won't be its own geo. Like when I, I already know that when I go to bake this, um, I'm not gonna give this hard plastic that I'm shaping now. I'm not gonna give it its own geometry. So when I come through and do my low resolution mesh, I'm gonna like encapsulate the whole shoe. Basically, will just be like one sewn together piece of geometry, including the sole. Um, but what I want to do is just like I want to pull it out because I want that highlight right there to to catch when I bake my textures. What kind of uh, tea do you prefer, dark and grim? People, uh, people, I, I don't really much care for coffee. So my uh, my uh, colleague tells me, yeah, him neither. So he drinks a ton of tea. I'm like I didn't even know there was really a significant amount of caffeine in tea. I certainly only drink coffee for the caffeine whenever I need to wake up, get through some work. I definitely know that like, I'll drink a lot of green tea and definitely doesn't wire me up the way coffee does. A little too fat right there. Let's mow that down a bit. Just want that protrusion visible for the bake, but not really. Earl Grey, a slice of lemon. Right. Earl Grey, I don't really know what that flavor is. I always see it. It's always in the, uh, the selection of tea bags, but I never, I think I've never even had it. I'm kind of fine with how rounded all of these shapes are. Um, I think it fits. I think like you know, usually kind of. I think shoes like this usually they kind of have these sort of like rounded shapes and sort of aerodynamic kind of looking, you know, curves and stuff. So I'm I'm like fine that these aren't like hard triangles. They're like, they're kind of meant to be rounded. Back to a little bit more of this detailing here. Probably want to up my resolution a bit. So yeah, see some, it's not very many polygons. Do I want to do it via subdivide? Or do I want to do it via dynamesh? Subdivide seems to do it. I was broadcasting. <laughs> it 
Is Earl Grey um, one of the caffeinated ones? I think my green tea is caffeinated. But like my lemon tea when I get a sore throat or something, is not one of the ones I have in my cupboard. Sorry guys, one sec. Waiting for a very important confirmation here. Um, I think I'm going to be going down to the uh, Stanley Cup down there in Nashville. Just waiting on the final details here, which would be really exciting. I've never been to a Stanley Cup. I've been went to school in Nashville, so I've been following the Predators for a little while. So. Really excited to be able to tool down to Nashville if it all works out. I actually already bought my plane fare before I even got the ticket. I'm not digging super hard into these right now, like I'm not pressing super hard um, because I don't need it to be like this big wrinkly mess, I just need their like, once I project detail, I want there just to be some indication of a strain there. So like these just little glancing angles where it protrudes a little bit will do just that, you know, head on, it doesn't really look like as much there, but you know, there's so much subtlety and, and tension in the shapes of you know malleable cloth and even hard cloth has so I just want to make sure you're like you know it's suggested and it'll turn up nicely in the bake yeah, I just want to see like that now seems a lot softer Maybe a little bit too soft I'll probably take the smooth stronger Going too far and then backing it off is, you know, a very, very integral part of my 2D and 3D workflows.
your motorcycle guy, dark and grim. That's uh, I always envy motorcycles on the road if they can get around so much, especially out here in LA where it's like it's such an absurd place to drive. Um, but it's also incredibly dangerous out here to have a bike. It's just uh, people are really bad drivers out here. They're very reckless. And you might be doing everything just right on your bike, but it's not going to be your fault when one of these people don't pay I mean, you wouldn't believe the way people don't pay attention out here on the road. It's, it's really terrible. Yeah, I suppose it's all relative. Um, the main thing, I, like the issue out here, is that like it's so crowded. It's just like one of the worst places in America for traffic. And so as a result, everybody's out there is like driving in an extremely agitated state because they've been sitting in a dead stop for so long that they see a little patch of green light, like or they see a little, uh, a, you know, they see a little patch of uh, open road. And it's just like it's just like pirate rules out there. All the rules of, you know, how and when you merge and what's going on here. No. Um, it's just it's nuts. It just seems like it's like right out the window. Like people just forget all of like the rules of the road because they're just they've they're in LA. They've been waiting a long time and they've just had it. <laughs> it's like, and I get it too because like it is so bad out here and people just drive like such a lunacy. Um, like you wouldn't believe how often you see just someone's like. Totally not my right away. Totally not safe or a good call for me to go right now. But I'm waiting a long time and I'm going. <laughs> like that's like it happens all the time right here. Just like oh I'm just gonna go because I've just been waiting too long and I you know I'm me and I'm pretty important in the world of me. So I'm uh, I'm just gonna go and then just like freeze traffic on both sides. So they just said I'm not waiting any longer. It happens all the time. Like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> it's like come on guys, I'm trying to have a society here. And like I'm usually a pretty not defensive driver because I think that you need to be really kind of you got to be you know moving at the speed of others to like not be putting yourself at hazard. So I you know I can drive pretty I drive pretty fast and I you know try to uh, there we go that's why it's not working um, you know just try to like create space. I'm usually out there just creating space between me and other cars because that's how little I trust the other other drivers. Um, but you know, out here I'm a lot less defensive because of the because of the pie rules. I mean, like when everyone's operating on the road via pirate rules, you need to just you know, otherwise you're gonna get hit. <laughs> like just operating on the same rules as everybody else. Like LA kind of makes me a dick driver sometimes. But I do strive to never cut people off. That's the like you know there's there's just no reason for that. Someone's like rushing up to your to your if you got an open lane and someone like rushes up to close the gap which is another thing people do out here all the time to my chagrin um that's one thing but yeah you shouldn't ever get in front of everybody. anybody who's going faster than you another rule that people seem to not know about in los angeles i do tend to engage in the pyro roll sometimes it's like oh i got it i'm taking it <laughs> That's probably a little too aggressive, of course, on the detailing, but now just back it off a bit. Now it's present. 
which is not as in your face. Create as much surface tension. So I put a few nicks and knocks in there and just kind of look like it's been kind of stitched in. What's up, Jacob CG? How you doing? Welcome to the channel. Courier, that's probably it's a pretty like Jason Bourne job to have. Just like ripping through the streets on your bike. Ducking cabs. Getting to getting the parcel by the deadline. I love I do love driving. That's why I so passionate and annoyed out here about it. Um driving is like I do really enjoy an open road and some tunes and a good engine. It's really quite peaceful. I was really, I, I was born in Las Vegas, where I'm from, and uh, that city does an amazing job of like growing their infrastructure with the population of the city. So as the city grows, you know, you're always, they're building more freeways, opening more lanes, building more loops around the city, and so you can get from corner to corner in that city in 25 minutes, I don't care where you are. And like, that's just kind of very underrated luxury of the desert towns. Just actually having space on the roads is uh, something I miss very, very much. So I'm pretty happy with this as it is. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to do, um, going to be doing the, uh, the the super detailed stuff in the texture package. You know, I'll probably make this tongue into a mesh. I'll do a little logo there. All stuff that you can of course do in ZBrush, but it's going to be better for me to do it in the texture package. Like I said before, where I can inspect and make sure that I have enough of the um, texture resolution because I know that I'm gonna I know basically I'm gonna fit this model um, she's only gonna have um, she's only gonna have a 2k texture for um, all of her equipment so it's actually 2K is going to be a lot of detail. I could probably fit her all in 1K, uh, but the other characters are 2K, and maybe that'll enable me to get some high-resolution paintings and patterns, um, you know, drawn on on her uh, on her tennis tennis dress there. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the shoes really will have the most detail. So um, I'll find out just how high detail I can go when I get these UV out of the texture package. What's up, Thomas Burren 3D? How you doing? Thanks, Ashley. It's like the only character I actually like made proper shoes for. The other characters, they don't get shoes. <laughs> yeah, like, um, just like really kind of phoned it in on the cleats of the other characters, and they're not as they're not as uh, 
crucial to the look is, is you know, her kind of tennis shoes look. So I'll probably like paint in some height information there, put like some branding on the sides of the shoes. You know, maybe like something, some snarky comment vertically sit there. <laughs> Does she have habanero? Microtrans, man, dude, the, the microtrans are real. You gotta, you know. I, I honestly, we thought about it. Disc Jam's like just too small a game for it, but like, I would totally love to have all the characters just be like modular, like pick these arms, pick these legs, pick these shoes, pick this head, and make it just total paper doll. And like, we're we're basically trying to make enough things to, um, like once we have the library of content then it's like okay let's just like open it all up open the floodgates and make everything sort of like interchangeable that's like the ultimate goal for what we're doing with our characters um yeah whether we get to that on our next game it's probably more likely than disc jam but you never know we're gonna keep working towards it and see where we get and who knows maybe maybe this time next year we're actually launching it in a patch to disc jam or something um is it better to start with anatomy before going deep into character design i mean you know, I think, you know, with, it depends on like stylized versus realistic, of course. I think, I think you're always going to kind of need to have a fundamental understanding of anatomy. And that's something that, you know, can be fleeting. Um, a lot of the, a lot of, you know, really talented artists, artists far more talented than myself would say, like they say often that their anatomy skills leave them because they're not working on it a lot. Um, so it's like good to just practice on anatomy on like a weekly basis or something or just do like you know daily figure sketches to warm up you know whatever it is um, I would definitely say that like yeah I mean you know anatomy just like it just helps so much not only does it not only does it like help you to be able to build your shapes confidently and like you know lay out what you're envisioning in your mind but it also the things that are reinforced by anatomy like the the flowing nature of the human body and the rhythm of like the gesture drawings are helpful because they suggest the rhythm of like like you start coming to grips with like gravity and rhythm and the way you know the forms in your body all sort of like intertwine together those are all reinforcing principles of like art and balance and it comes in play in d design quite often so like just for like like that like, like that non-obvious reason, it is like good to have your chops in anatomy, because the better you get with anatomy, you know that you'll find you're having a more natural sense of things like 3D space and, and balance and and you know things that matter for for other parts of concepting that are not anatomy. Um, all that being said, there are a lot of artists out there who will admit like they're amazing 3D artists, and they'll admit to you they're like, yeah, I'm really bad at anatomy. And um, I know as as a requisite, no, it's not it's not a requisite. You know, like if it's like learning learning anatomy is a, is it's going to take years to kind of get a, at least a mastery of it. It's going to take a lot of hours. Um, can you be a successful concept artist without that? Of course, you can. Um, you know, to what degree you're working on humans obviously might affect it. But even when you're working on creatures, I mean like Ashley in, in the channel she's another one of the instructors she does really rad creatures and they're just all out of her imagination and but they they look believable because of a sound understanding of anatomy and she's you know making fictional skeletons and muscular structures for creatures that don't exist yet they look believable because of that and that's like you know that's all comes from just a understanding of not only human anatomy but animal anatomy and just like the way skeletons muscles and uh, the sort of construction of, the, of physical shapes all work. Um, I actually have like a bookmark Pinterest of just like my favorite figure references, and I have like a like a reminder to do reminder to like just wake up, sit down before you start your day, gesture draw like a handful of them. And actually, oh my god, I started writing this tool. Uh, I started writing, like I started like writing this exact thing myself, um, and then somebody made a fuck perfect version of it. Where is it? Is it just there? It is. This thing. Do you want to get good at anatomy? 
point this thing at a reference folder full of human figures or, or you know dynamic poses that you like and they it'll come with some stuff and just drill 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 that thing right there is just a it's like a just a lightweight little app that just cycles through reference for you so you have that up you can have a notebook in front of you or do it on your tablet whatever you want to do but just you know do that for 10 minutes a day and then in a month from now, two months from now, by the end of the year, you'll be really good at anatomy, and you'll just have an understanding of like where to place the the blocks of the human form, and like where you know where they would sit in in space when you're contorting your torso and all that kind of stuff. I mean, those are things I still struggle with. I mean, I think everybody kind of does. It's 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 very, the articulation of a bone and muscle is very complicated, and. Um, you know, it's something that when done well adds so much. Okay. I'm smoothing these laces out a little bit because they are a little bit blocky. I'm do a little polish here. That's too much. I just did a little bit of a um, inflate and then polished it down. Tidies up some of the jaggies a little bit. And another thing I'll do is I'll um, mask topological. I think it's in. I think it's in a brush. I always forget where they are. I put them on my menu and then I forget where they're at. Yeah. Brush auto masking mass topological. Now this is helpful when I'm moving these laces around because even though I'm the, these brushes I'm like overlapping in brush, because I'm not sharing topology, it's only going to pull up this cord. So that'll help me sort of pull these off of each other. Without, without one one cord affecting the other. That. Pull this out, pull that in. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you're, I mean, like, you're not wrong, Spectre Dave, in that, like, you know, there's, like, so many. Instagram models out there, and you know, there's there's good ref, I mean, there's good anatomical ref, especially if you're a pinup artist. And there's guys like Elliot Chastwa, I think his name is Elias Chastwa or something like that, um, that just do exclusively pinups for the most part, and like a really cool comic book style. So I'm sure Instagram is like a treasure trove of just referencing. <laughs> Yeah, because like just to continue on the anatomy thing, like you know, there's so many base meshes, you know, that are really good out there for sale. Um, you know, the main thing, like that I wanted to do with um, our 
other characters is uh, is basically um, make it kind of exaggerated comic booky, but still kind of grounded in reality. Um, she's a little bit more proportional. Um, yeah, there's nothing really exaggerated. She's not like heroic proportions or anything like that. Uh, but our other characters are like pretty, you know, exaggerated without being too, you know, over the top stylized. And I kind of wanted to see how far I could push it, but still kind of retaining some believability. Um, you know, and you end up in the uncanny valley a lot you, with that kind of, you know, design. Um, I found, but you know, lessons learned. Really smooth, stronger, and it's not doing its job. Smooth, stronger is not smoothing very strongly. That seems wrong. Smooth, stronger. Ashley, can you verify this? Is smooth, stronger at Z intensity 25? Let me reset all my brushes. Smooth is at 100. Smooth stronger. Yeah, I must have just accidentally turned down my. No wonder. Yeah, I must have. <laughs> that's funny. I accidentally turned down my Z intensity on smooth stronger, and I was like, usually this. I mean, smooth stronger is a pretty heavy handed, br hand heavy handed brush. Yeah, it comes through and cleans up high poly geo real fast. I'm noticing it wasn't buffing out all the details I was wanted cleaned up. I'm not even sure how or when I did that, but I did. Two hundred percent of smooth. Thanks, Cold Phoenix. Okay, I'm pretty good. One thing I want to do probably. I did the laces. The tongue's all snug. I think I probably want to um, convert this into creased low poly geo and then you know make it match this in terms of shape crease up that bevel and try to make it like a really nice polished surface definitely don't want this like choppiness I don't want any artifacts of dynamesh on the ridge I want it to be as clean as I possibly can make it look really mechanical because it's gonna be like a hard plastic yeah Spectre Dave totally like I remember collecting so much I mean I've got this is even like in the past five, six years. What's up, Doug E? How you doing? Yeah, just about done here with the shoe. Um, I think if I finish this, what I'll probably end up doing is getting in some of the the tricks I'll use to get the low poly out of here. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a good way to spend some time because that, that's specific to games, and that's one of the few things I can speak intelligently on. Um, but yeah, I still have like a folder where it's like, I used to just collect images on my hard drive that were good anatomy ref, and I built this big library of anatomy ref that, you know, this is all, like, not before the internet, but it was before like Pinterest, it was before a lot of these like, you know, image themed, you know, collection web apps and things like that. So now it's like, I just have Pinterest boards for everything, and I follow... I follow dudes who have Pinterest libraries of like, you know, 200,000 pins, and they just pin like into very, very specific categories. Whether it's like cyberpunk, then they'll have like 10 cyberpunk, like cyberpunk eyewear, cyberpunk helmets, cyberpunk boots, and so I'll follow those guys. So now it's like the world of reference is getting so networked. It's great because it's just a lot easier than what I was doing in the past, which is just to like you know, simply set up my own tedious folders and build local libraries of images. And I still do that when I when I know I have a piece I want to do. Like, I knew I wanted to do tennis shoes for this character. So I, I went out and I searched for tennis shoes. I found ones that I liked and I, I threw them all together um, on my hard drive still. Like, I still do that reference gathering process. But, like, as far as, like, I used to just scour the internet and I would open up, like, 20 tabs and I would find a good website of, like, good anatomy references. And I would just, like, 
right click save as right click save as and I would just manually because I, I just needed reference and I was like I just found it to be valuable to have reference on hand and I just started like manually collecting files and like I mean even that was tedious I mean like that was like post internet and super tedious now it's just like the way I kind of get imagery and 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 you know now I'm working on a brand new model I can just bring up my OneNote and my Pinterest board and it's like these are all the ways the human body works together and like it's just all the information I could put it's like it's like a, it's the best anatomy dictionary you know I, one could ask for right all right let me see if I can't bring this down because of this is kind of an awkward shape and thickness um, you know I'm not super confident I'll be successful here um, it might go a long way to just make this geometry as a single face this was always meant to be just a dynamesh sketch like that that shape was something I was just kind of sketching out and then I refined it to the point where like okay that's like basically the final shape I'm gonna use um, now that I'm like pretty settled on the shape and these patterns and the triangles and ovals um, I could probably live with it to be honest I could just like turn this into a low poly mesh and in and, and print it out um, or bake it down rather but I think it'll look cleaner since it is supposed to be hard plastic. I think it'll look cleaner if I kind of match this and you know make a nice bevel. And I think if I do like a, a mechanical looking hard edge panel like that, I think it'll it'll make this a more successful, you know, piece of geometry and it'll make the overall model look better when I bake it for the game engine. So I think it might be worth spending a little time on it right now. Um, I wish my poly groups were sound because that would go a long way to making this go faster. Yeah, that's a decent start to be honest. I pull that off. Pull this off. I want to get rid of like all the thickness and try to make this. I'll work on a duplicate just in case. Um, I want to work. And if I get rid of the thickness, I'll be able to just turn it into. Um, a single sheet of faces and those will dynamesh, not dynamesh, Z remesh a little bit cleaner. And um, then I can just get some real nice polished hard edges which will be easier to work with. So I just control W to make it its own poly group. Auto group this. Auto groups will basically make everything that's its own island it's poly group. Yeah. yeah, see, it kind of got me most of the way there. Delete hidden. Can I show off my Wonder Woman I am working on for your scrutiny? Yeah, for sure. Link it up, Inspector Day. Take a peek. I wonder if I did a visibility grow, which is Control Shift X. I'll close that gap there. Not bad. Make that one poly group. I can delete hidden on that. Then I think I'll be able to. Just trim that off there. Auto groups. Oh, this is still connected. back but you know I think really didn't take that much to get here 
getting pretty close to getting like a nice piece of geo to work with. I like Dynamesh to just kind of, you can just kind of be sloppy and, you know, if you don't mind a little bit of tediousness, which is like, I mean, what, what's not tedious about doing this, right? Just what 3D art is, I feel like, is just like exercise and tedium. But, um, you know, with Dynamesh, it's really nice because if you just have the patience, you can kind of just be really sort of improvisational with your geometry. So yeah, this is not bad. Polish a little bit. Double side, yeah, there's still some thickness here and there. Let's see if I can't get that out when I ZV mesh this. How long have I worked in ZBrush, Thomas Burton 3D? Um, you know, I always forget the date. It's I've been working like hobbyist. I've been probably ZBrushing for like six to eight years as a hobbyist. Uh, I've only been doing it professionally for about two and a half years. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been tinkering with it enough that I've, that I've got you know, I've been playing with it long enough that I've got a pretty decent understanding of how things work. But certainly. Um, Got a long way to go to be uh, masterful, I think. I'm just trying to take this thing down by half. Do some polishing, more Z remeshing. gonna have trouble with like those main little like in cuts and areas in which I uh, yeah like it thinks it has to match the geo that's inside and it really doesn't actually you know what Let me give us a few more revisions here I think what's actually gonna be better Here's the best way to do this. Act. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably scrap that. I got another idea. I think I'm gonna go more traditional hard surface. Actually, <laughs> no, that's funny. I'm an indecisive modeler. It's not my fault. Your name rhymes with the uh, my indecision. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is let's get that back out. I'm going to do a more traditional sort of hard surface workflow for this. Um, lazy mask is my little brush I like to do here. I'm going to ignore the cuts for now because I'm going to come back in and put the cuts in there. I'm just going to define this shape. Extract it out and do something similar to what I did with
So yeah, I'm not gonna I'm gonna like ignore these triangles for now because then what I'll do is I'll cut them out. I'm gonna extract this whole thing as one big shape. Make sure it's like fit to the you know the exact curve and bevel that I want it to have. Make sure it's nice and precise, just like I did with the cuff. And then I'll come through with a slice brush and I'll slice those off. And I'll, I'll put those shapes in there. I actually think it'd be look cooler if this came up into that. Get this hard plastic like. I'm gonna change this curve a little bit. So it actually like it'll like meet the back of the shoe and extend from it. This part here is gonna be trouble, I'll tell you right now. I have a mask. Okay, I just found this brush. Oh, where is it? I, uh, I found a brush. I forget. Again, I always like try to give credit to the artists who uh, point me at this stuff, and I forget what artist did. But it's a... I forget how I set this up. What is the name of this brush? Concaves? Yeah, that's it. It's not in this build, but I'll just double click this. Oh, shoot. Well, I, there's like a mask con cave brush and it'll like when I'm doing things like I was just doing it would like it would like go to the edge and stop so, for some reason I won't import right now but very useful for what I was just doing okay so I think this is a nice mask oh, let me just work on this trim a little bit So that'll be a nice extract. And I'll just take that geometry, smooth it out, make it into exactly what I'm going for. And I'll cut out the pattern. And even just at a glance, I can tell I'm liking the pattern better with it reaching up like that. Although, it looks kind of odd with the cuff. Maybe it's better. Well, these are all things I can solve. I like the movement of that into that, um, but I think that sh that little connection is a little bit odd.
experiment's gonna do here. These shapes are um, fighting each other a little bit. Sergi, 58 Joe, what's happening? Right, so let's see before I start doing anything too crazy. Let's see what an extraction would look like, just that. I think I'll probably want to do no thickness, no double side, extract just the faces, except that. Curvy Geo is going to be a problem, so I'll just get rid of it. Greetings of Barcelona. I was just talking about my desires to visit Barcelona. Just yesterday, as a matter of fact. Never been, and was very curious about it, and uh, would like very much to visit. No problem, man. God. It's not freeze border. Let's just try to let's take it down by half. Try to salvage some geo out of this. with half but adapt on so that'll try to maintain the shape um, with triangles and as I notice like 
issue areas like this, I can sort of paint in some smoothness and just try to keep it nice and smooth so that when I do get to lower resolution, um, I can just drop it on the top. Too much detail, too many polygons, too much geometry can hurt you. Like I always say, I've been I mentioned this in my stream before, but it's just like how you navigate using a lot of polys versus a little and the benefits to each is very important. G over there did go to a T, so I'm fine with that. Not to a T, but to a point. Go back to my regular smooth here. Yeah, I think overall, this is a pretty good shell. Now that I can, now that I have this, I can do a little bit more hard surfacey operations on this and turn it into a bit more of a uh, hard surface shape. I'm assuming I'm going to have a little bit of work to do with this geo here, but nothing catastrophic. I probably don't want this poly. Delete a single poly. Get rid of that triangle. There's a little triangle in there too. Collapse that edge. Yeah, so that's not bad. It's uh, not lining up I, you know, perfectly right now, but that's easy enough to solve. Get a little inflate on it. Actually, let me hide the other. Yeah, I don't even need to. Honestly, like, the topo brush is another thing that works great there. Um, but I find as well that, like, you know, when you have Dyna meshes, I find the curve brushes, like on the Topo mesh, they, they don't always find the surface and they'll pop in and off. They'll pop off the surface a lot. And um, even noodling, I mean, it's, it's uh, 3D is just like there's so much noodling going on. So even noodling those forms can be a little bit more time consuming. But this one seems to work out for me here. It's got the, the shape I'm looking for. I got nice low resolution geo so I can nestle it in there right where I think it goes. find this shape pretty cleanly. That's too far down, but that's easy enough to adjust there. try and find a shape that works better for this curve and I think that's actually probably something that works like I think like swooping in and up works a lot better than the shape I had previously um, in terms of like getting what I was after um, for this hard plastic and how it relates to the trim of the shoe I'm just kind of popping it off with the clay tubes brush, just like 
getting in some better placement. So I'm just kind of pulling him back off into space here. Doesn't need to be exact because I am gonna I'm gonna mess with this a little bit after I extract it, but just to This geo here, but you know, it will hold form. It's really dashing through the snow on this playlist. This is Jingle Bells. I guess there is no copyright on Jingle Bells, but come on, guys. Let's keep the playlist somewhat relevant. <laughs> yeah, noodling is my industry word. It's uh, it's the best way I can describe. Like, oh, let me just adjust this little vertex here. Like, oh, let me just pop that face out just a smidgen. Just noodling. So I want this poly. I want this geo to be up here. This is gonna be a problem. This stupid geo. This little part right here is a bit of a problem. The retopology sort of mess with that a little bit too much. Let me see if I can't do a same operation. Keep the same amount of geometry. Keep it pretty close to each other. I'll even like probably bring up the adaptive side. better but it's still just pulling that curve in which I don't like. Just create a triangle there. I think inserts of geometry. Just give it more to play with. I do want that to go to a point. I don't want this one to go to like a What is that madness? Same Z's. Ooh, that's pretty good. Now this part turned out. It is not. <laughs> the algorithm cannot figure that part out. Pixel I think that works too. <laughs> it really is what it is though. thousand points. Um, key mesh, polygroup all. Give it a little bit of thickness and as expected. These were a little pieces of geo messing with me. Because they're not smooth. Polygroups. Here's my normals. Maintain some of those hard edges. 
damages there. Now this is obviously a little bit better looking from a hard surface perspective than the previous things I was doing, um, but because I went a little bit too low, the geo is still not great. But I can get around all of this by simply hey, get serious with it, please. Collapse that in, get rid of that nonsense. So that's pretty nice. A um, little bit better from a hard service perspective. And it's still nice and low, so I can mess with it without too much trouble. Um, what I'll probably do is a little polish by groups, maybe. too low in geometry. I have no idea what part of the uh, geo algorithm is causing that. That's a very curious little thing to maintain that it would do that. Um, okay. It really does just struggle with that, that shape. Oh, now we're getting some decent. I think 2,000 is just about right. Yeah, I think this is going to work out quite nicely. So now I've got nice low res, and like, you know, again, so that took, shoot, 20, 30 minutes. Um, but the hard surface result I'm going to get out of this this new shell versus the dynameshed geo I had before it's just going to be a lot more successful it's going to be a lot cleaner and um, you know it'll enable me also to do you know nice mechanical cuts with the slice brush 
and that'll let me um, define like an, if it's going to be a hard plastic that's like holding the thing, holding the you know shoe. You know, it should be pretty mechanical looking, and just I was never going to get there with the Dynamesh. Got. Okay, almost down to the final hour here. Um, grab a water, take a quick break, do a little stretch. Give me about 30 seconds. I'll be right back, guys. And we're back. Final hour. <clears throat> so as it is, I can just grab a Q mesh and just pull that out. poly groups that's already a nice clean edge I can then bevel alongside all of this and it's just gonna create a nice mechanical feel to that plastic <laughs> um, but I'm gonna take it a step further than that
So, you know, <clears throat> that's a pretty fast way. It took me a little bit longer than I expected because of what I was trying to salvage out of the Dynamish. But just getting some nice procedural geo, you know, really cleans things up in a hurry. This is the definition of noodling to me. Actually, this is the definition of noodling. It's a noun though, give me the verb. this whole thing and cut it all off anyway, but I just want to see if this actually is working better than I expected it to. Getting a little bit closer to the final shape than I expected to get off this one Z remesh. Which of course is going to complicate things when it comes time for me to... Uh, <coughs> I'm going to want to cut those patterns back in, um, which will be easier to do without thickness. It'll be easier to do if it was just faces. This would be better if it came to a point. Another strange little song. Feel like it's like a Skyrim track. <laughs> yeah. Noodling is got it has a musical connotation, does it? That is news to me. So you always learn something. Here at the Pixelogic official ZBrush stream, not only do you 3D model and sculpt, we like to shape you as an artist and as a person. So we do vocabulary exercises, such as noodling with its instrument. <laughs> oh man. Not the first time I've been. <laughs> I can't even say that. You guys know where I'm going, probably, with that. I don't want to get in trouble. The good folks over Pixelagic. <laughs> Noodling on his musical instrument. I uh, some intelligence in the clarification of musical instrument. Ha <laughs> 
There's a junior high school joke to be made somewhere in there. Those are the best kind of jokes. my clip curve brush Let's slice this off right to there comes to a point, but I want it just to kind of be a little bit sharper. It was a little bit too curvy there. Same with here. I'm going to just probably pull it in. That's still Dynamesh Geo. And I'll probably stay Dynamesh Geo because I think that little, um, the, like, thick material the soles are made out of, um, in the reference I was looking at, it's like, it looks like it's a little bit rounded. It doesn't look super hard surfacey. It looks like kind of like, like, you know, like more like molded soft plastic with that would have a little in, in dents like this. So I actually I'll probably leave that as dynamic. I think it works. Like the hard plastic here, yeah, is a lot more effective as hard surface. Nice curve out of that. A little more aerodynamic looking. What is this song now? What is happening today? Same art, uh, the same guy as the last one. This one's called Fluffing a Duck by Kevin MacLeod. He's just really throwing a lot of innuendo at me today in the old YouTube random playlist. I don't appreciate it. I only bite my tongue for so long. Fluffing, I was fluffing a duck, everybody, from Kevin McLeod. <laughs> Music noodles. <laughs> oh, man. Music noodles. What are you doing this afternoon? Oh, I'm just fluffing my duck on my music noodle. <laughs> There's a nifty little trick. There's like, you know, there's some sculpting deformities and some just things that inherited from the base geo. You know, it's kind of all around. Um, I want to, I would like to polish that out, not by hand, because if going through and sculpting it all, it'll smooth too much stuff out and it'll just be a waste of time. Polished by groups is perfect for that. So I've already established like where my groups are, where my creases are. So polished by groups is really good at like, you know, handling things overall. So. But it's also creating an unfortunate dip there. So, store a morph target. I have recently changed my UI. I have no idea where I buried morph target stuff. Here it is. Um, I suppose I might as well just show it in the geometry. In the tool menu, it's down here. So I'll store a morph target and I'll polish by groups, get like those nice edges that I was looking for and smooth out the things that were looking a little lumpy. And then to address this I can just come back in with my morph brush and paint out the change I just made just in that area. Just so, like just localize my edit 
right to this spot. So that will be how it was before the morph target, and then I'll get that, that point back, and everything else has been corrected. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I wish I knew the Spanish word for what kind of, what we were just noodling on with the word noodle. to a point though. So Time for the old polish by features. Because polish by features will respect creasing. There we go. Which it just did, which is nice. Get back to my morph brush. Buff this area back out once more. Decent point right there. Decent trim all around. Nice bevel. <laughs> uh, I can't. We'll have to rewind the tape on that one, Kyle. I can't, <laughs> can't even get into it. It remained PG, I assure you of that. So. Nothing untoward happened. Just had a lot of weird songs coming up. Turns out the definition of noodling, the verb, has to do with the uh, musical act of noodling with an instrument. Oh, geez, what the hell happened? This geo got polished. I should have creased that first. Polished all the way. That's the edge I need creased. Let's crease that edge. Let's crease that edge. You can see they both are kind of fighting a little bit. And this is kind of the same thing like traditional box sculptors would do in Maya, really. They would just you know, not with some, you know, the smooth, not such a smooth selection as this is, but, you know, one vert at a time, build out low poly, and just like rotate the camera in 3D and just eyeball where it, you kind of think it should go. Um, you know, I always seem to, I never like got that far in Maya. Like ZBrush came out before I got that far and like learning how to box sculpt in Maya. Like people have like orthographic views of like, 3D characters and concepts, and they would just one box, one vert at a time, rotate around and tumble in 3D space and get to their model that way. I mean, damn, more power to you. It's amazing that that that, that was a method that people even did. It just seems like it'd be so time consuming. Deformation polished by features. I'll maintain creasing. It's kind of my fault for doing that not in ISO mode in the first place. I should have been in isolation mode and just kept an eye on it as opposed to just doing it and only paying attention to one area when I did it. Do it a couple more times. And again, yeah, it's, you know, 
a little rounded in places, but I think the places it's rounded versus the places it's creased are um, what I intended. So, nice hard surface. Plastic kind of trim there. I don't even know what you would call that. part and since I did change the placement of these curves I'll probably need to change the detail leather a little bit so I'm gonna work on that clay round should make it kind of lumpy and then I'll come in with smooth stronger it's a little too lumpy tighten that out ah something at the door pardon me one moment Apologies. Just getting a wine delivery, which is, you know, priorities. Hi there, open mouth. <laughs> uh, I was just saying the definition of noodling is just like what I would call like the just like the just noodling these little, yeah, you know, just like the, I guess like the, the little micro edits you make as you're kind of just like making sure everything is lined up just so, just like noodling the polygons. Ashley's got another word for it that's not PG, but she uh, kept it PG when describing it. Um. And then that led to a whole conversation about uh, the origins of the word. Provided some definitions. Found out that there was a mutual instrument. Then a very... Then as we were speaking of this, the most random noodle music came on. <laughs> the most random noodle music came on the uh, random YouTube playlist. And there was basically a block the same artist. Don't know why, but I'm very much just picturing. Probably would do that with a height map there on the texture. But, why the heck not? Let's make it a two. Let's do an extract just in case.
Yeah, I'll probably just do that on the texture itself. Probably don't need that really. Just want to take a look at that geo. Just a quick experiment. Cause I'm probably gonna do like a, a stripe of like some kind of different material. Like this will be like a mesh. The tongue of the shoe will be like mesh. But I want to do like a stripe of like, you know, it's like maybe like a cloth laying it over it or something like that. use them as guidelines and you can kind of see them here. I'll use red wax because that's like actually Ashley's favorite material so I'll use red wax. Um, just so I can see the cuts on the inside and like what I had laid down previously. The shape's changed enough that I'll of the shoe. Let's move that one away. This is the hard plastic. This is the, uh, what do you call it? Let's call that the strap. that again. I think I did. My morph brush. Alright. Once I morph this down, I gotta remember to just hop on in here. Drop a crease on this. And the move AQ brush is really good for this. I got it on a hotkey. It moves things to a point. So unlike, you know, like the regular move has a fall off there, move AQ will like bring things to a point. So it's really good for corners. maintain form. Uh, look at that. Everything is maintaining form. We have nice, clean, low poly geo. Is there anything better? I don't think there is.
very aerodynamic, I think, which is, I think, what shoes are going for. I hope that's what they're going for. I guess the main things to do now are cut out the patterns that I sketched out in Dynamesh. Be very careful here because I mess this up too much. It's gonna look stupid. Yeah, it looks stupid. Already. So if I take a look, so I think I'm just going to cut this up with uh, slice brushes. Just select lasso here.
something to think about here. is Mandel's <laughs> What a strange playlist this uh, YouTube one is. Christmas songs, chill EDM, bizarre.
these a little bit cooler, I think. It's hard surface cuts. Cut right there and lean up geometry. I'll try that again. Probably have to paint those in. Can paint those in and then slice around what I paint. That'll actually make it a little bit easier. I can lay down a little sketch real quick. Let's delete this one.
basically trying to mask out where these cuts are going to be. Alright, Ashley. See you later. Noodle on. <laughs> Noodle on. That's a ridiculous thing to say to somebody. Ugh. That's funny.
So yeah, I mean, if you just look at that versus this, I mean, just see how much cleaner. So that's what all this is for. Um, you know, it took a little bit, you know, about 45 minutes to an hour um, to experiment and find the right look and noodle, yes, noodle the geometry so that it was like, you know, in the right proportion and, and fitting cleanly against the, the leather of the shoe and making sure the creases lined up and keeping my creases in the edges there so that the edges were maintained. But all of that led to the difference between this and this. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's not a super big detail because it's just a part of the shoe that's going to be very pretty small on camera. But as you can imagine, this and this is far greater than that. You can just tell by the way it's rendering. Like, if you see the way, like, the, the Dynamesh, which is, again, this is just a Dynamesh sketch. A lot of artists, um, you know, can deliver work this way. They'll be like, oh, here's my concept. And then that's, like, the finished version of it. And it's like, well, that's really rubbery and, you know, sketchy still. It's like it, it. This was like this is from the 3D sketch. This this piece of geo was when I was sketching out what I would like, you know, this to become. And I'm realizing now I didn't even do the back of the thing. I gotta cut some cut some areas back here. Um, but anyway, point being is that uh, this would have been fine, you know, but it would have been lumpy. And this these like lumpy things you're seeing, even with some polishing, it would have stayed lumpy. And these little lumps you're seeing, when you project and you do your normal map bake and you're trying to generate your game resolution mesh, um, that lumpiness will come through in your bake because it's just going to sample this geo, find a bunch of lumpiness, and you know you could go through and age polish the whole thing, you know, but like, that's what I was already doing, and then you still get kind of weird curves and lumpiness on the edges, and then you gotta. Yeah, start brushing out that detail and even just doing this starts getting some lumpiness there but you have a lot of you know geometry so you have to pull that back and then you start getting to it just becomes very cumbersome and you know going through this whole thing would probably always have some artifacting and you know ultimately it can be a lot faster to just go through and build the low poly geo and, and find the shape you want in a very low resolution put creases on the places you think you're going to want creases, like the area of the tongue I was dealing with. And you know, like, you know, this is, it's, it gets you pretty far, 90% of the way there. But if you really want to have clean geo after all of this, you know, you got more work to do. You know, like shaping this so it's symmetrical is bad. It's tough because you have this, like, fall-off brush and... You have so many polygons you're working with, and as soon as you move it, then it's like, okay, like you're starting to lose your hard surface flow, so you start painting some of the hard surface back, and it becomes you know, a little wobbly again. So those are the kind of things you want to look out for, because you can spend forever just trying to detail something that really you can just get nice and clean if you you know, put the time in to get the right geometry. You know, this is basically exactly what I want little things I need to change are like right here, just easy enough to change, change so there, and again there's so much geometry at play here that like you can't really mess with this too much without breaking something. And that's really clean, nice geometry. Drop right on there and it just fits nice and snug on the mesh below it. Just really fits for what I'm trying to do here. Like sculpt a lot of this back now. Sculpting back the leather now exposes these nice bevels, which, you know, with these bevels here, it just looks more like a constructed, you know, overall piece looks like it was manufactured and everything lines up mechanically.
Um, I actually put my UI for free on my Gumroad. Um, this is my 1080 UI because the 1440 is less common. Um, I'll put my 1441 up there um, as well. This is obviously the 1440 is the one I'm using right now. But here you go, number rub. That's uh, the download for my um, the 1080 version of the same UI. Uh, this one's shifted around a bit now that I got the more screen real estate. I'm getting a little bit more bulky with it all and just putting everything on there. My 1081 is is kind of all the bare essentials that I needed, along with some hotkeys and like, sub menus for things like this deformation or geometry, creasing and grouping, um, sub tool operations, and I think there's alpha, yeah, alpha um, brushes so I can do all the curve brush stuff all right there. So yeah, all that all the hotkeys and stuff are in there as well. The uh, only thing it's missing is that I don't, I don't include brushes and shaders because I'm not sure which of those are like I'm allowed to distribute or not. I don't really want to track down all the ones. It's just time sync that something I don't have right now is time. Inflating around the edges here to kind of just bring it out to the edge. Trying to bring the leather right back up flush with the new cuts. Oh yeah, you can customize the UI in a big way, Gary. You can, um, all of this stuff here is, uh, do a quick demo here. Oh, I'm after my time. Alright, so there's the shoe now. Yeah, 
pretty much uh, I'm ready to go with that. I think the next thing I'll end up doing will be um, low poly. I think I'll be able to just export, dump this thing right out. Do the low poly UV map and then get her get her in game. I think that shoe is pretty much done. I'll do the texturing step. Like I said, the high resolution detail like leathery textures and um, dotting up these areas. I think all that will be done in the texture package once I see how much texture resolution I'm working with for the game. Um, but yeah, so to customize the UI. Customize UI, Z, Preferences, Config, Enable Customize. Now every single button in every single menu, um, you can press Control and Alt and drag it and put it someplace. So I put my groups loops up there because I use those a lot. Uh, projection, Extraction, um, Visibility Tools, Double Sided, Flip Sided, all that. Um, curve Tools, Brush Tools on the left here, all the Alpha relevant stuff, all the Stroke relevant stuff. Um, frame mesh with curves and then like down here is like shading stuff for me like colors um, paint brushes so like you know, these are paint specific brushes for painting um, filling the object with one color and one material material shaders all that and then down here I keep all my brushes and so if you want to like move brushes over you know again control and alt drag over like the Shane Olson fill brush as you can see I already have it down here because I love this brush he's another one of those ZBrush instructors Shane Olson I have his polish brush here too um, all of these are free on his website. His IMM brush is really good. But yeah, so like, you know, I've spent a lot of time doing that, you know, customizing my UI because I find myself digging in these menus a lot. I don't remember where everything is. Like, Morph Target is like buried down in here, right? And usually when I open up, I'm working up there. So I gotta go scroll down, find Morph Target. It's not, it's in priority order. It's not in alphabetical order. So like, you don't you gotta remember like the location of things. Then like, store Morph Target. And I'll free, you know, so I just keep Morph Target down here. There's the morph deformation slider, store morph target, delete morph target, polish by groups I use a lot. These are like my most used deformers. But you can also do custom menus, and then you do custom menus, and like, you know, I'll put that on a hotkey, and there's all the deformations right there. So I never have to go into like geometry, tool, deformation. Like, I don't really need to go, unless I need one of these twist ones or ones that I don't really use all that often. Um, for the most part, like 90% of these menus I have on hotkeys. Or I have on um, on the actual on my kind of shelf there on my palette, so it helps me move a lot faster. And again, like that's really just the most important thing. It's just you gotta be moving fast. It's faster the better in, in this game. Anyway, that's about it for today. Pretty happy with how far I got with the shoe. Um, basically done with it. Um, you know, texturing, coloring, and putting some materials down on it is next. But that's that's basically that's the tennis shoe. Um, now even now, even at this distance, like I can see how much I like that hard surface plastic more than the alternative. Hard to tell, but like, you know, you, you can just tell it's better. I'll probably go back and I'll cut out those parts there as well. Um, I think those those little, I think the, the, those parts in the back kind of add to it. So I think I'll probably take this mesh, go back and cut those out a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hopefully uh, answer some of your questions. And uh, I think next week we'll be doing some environment stuff because I am pretty set on characters for the time being so let's uh, build some let's get some um, who's he what's he uh, get the Z modeler brush out do some block modeling and start you know kind of doing block out meshes and Z modeler and then uh, refine refine and, and polish up and start you know executing some concepts alright guys have a good weekend go predators and uh, see you guys next time